Hey everybody, it has been a minute since I have vlogged and that is because my family came to visit. It was expected to be about a two to three day trip and turned out to last, let me straighten this out, mm, about 11 days. But obviously with family in town, that takes up a lot of time and energy and I just wasn't able to vlog that and it just didn't feel appropriate to do so. So I'm sorry, once again, MIA for a few days or a couple of weeks, but, um, but I'm back. And we're just going to be working over the next few days to sort of put my place back together. My sister tried so hard to keep it clean, but it's just really hard to do with like three boys and three adults um, in a small space. It's just not possible. So she did a great job, but I need to, get things back in order the way that I like them and sort of get myself back on track for my usual routine. But thankful for the time I had with them and it was great. It was so much fun to hang out with my nephews. It was exhausting, but it was fun. They're adorable. The twins, um, we took them to a bunch of parks and hung out and then my older nephew, Atlee, he's 12, took him rock climbing, which was super fun. We played tourist in the city. I went on the underground tour for the first time, which is a big deal in Seattle. A lot of people do it, tourists and locals. Everybody loves it and it was super fun. Learned a lot about the city. Um, so if you're in Seattle and you're looking for something to do, that's actually worth the money and the time. Super fun. And they have a couple of other ones as well. So there's like a more history oriented one, a uh, sort of red light one which is interesting and then they have a ghost stories one too so fun times um but yeah i am going to spend my sunday afternoon cleaning my house doing laundry um and getting things cleaned up i have a haircut tomorrow which i'm really excited for i haven't had my hair cut or colored since like february march so it's been a little while um the cut is probably just going to be keeping it pretty long and layered. I am really enjoying letting my hair do its natural curl when I wear it down. Currently we're rocking the bun. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for a haircut. So that'll happen tomorrow. And then it's just, like I said, getting life back to my usual routine. So a couple things to look forward to, but I'm gonna get cleaning on my condo and we'll catch up in a bit. So I'm out on the balcony, just kind of touching up the garden because it needed a little attention. And I was getting discouraged because I just didn't think my zucchini was really beginning to produce, but I just found these guys. Can you see them? These little zucchinis are starting to form and there's a bunch more over here. Yeah, so this is exciting. The zucchini is finally starting to come in. The beans are sad and I think I might rip these out and try again. And the cucumber is growing, but not necessarily producing anything yet. We do have a few strawberries coming in. So I've been taking one or two of those a day and it's been a nice little tasty treat in the morning. So, um, tomatillos are doing well. These are all starting to come in. Let's see, this one is a new one, but let's see. This one, this one. There's a few more over here. You can see they're really fun little lantern-like things, lots of them. Um, I didn't stake them as well as I probably should have because this one, for example, is uh, a little too heavy. So I need to figure that out before they break, like this has started to do. Just a bummer. So, need to solve that. But yeah, the garden is starting to produce. This is my hard-earned house cleaning beer. Hopefully you guys can see it, but the bedroom is more or less tidied and uh, ready for me. And then the living room is back in order. Everything is clean, including the kitchen. So I'm a very happy human. And now it is time for a celebratory beer. This one is a sour from Urban Family, which is a brewery right up the street. And can I get it? Huzzah. Yeah, there we go. So now I'm going to take my beer and enjoy my balcony and prep for the week ahead. Oh my God, can I get the door? 
as I can. I got myself a little fire pit. You can't see it very well, but it's a cute little bioethanol fire pit. And uh, it doesn't do much other than add a little ambience. So I'm going to sit here, enjoy my beer, enjoy the evening, and basically plan out the rest of my week. Morning coffee, clean house, and a lovely day. Time to hit the gym. Back from my workout and just having a few last sips of coffee before I dig into the work day. Um, the current workout routine is taking me about an hour and includes like warm up, upper, lower body, and core. So not too bad in all actuality and the time is really flying in there and I'm really enjoying gym time. So it's like a three minute walk from my apartment, um, which is great, like, more like a five minute walk. But anyway, it's very close and convenient and I really like that gym. It's never too crowded. It's not the fanciest of places, but it, it's comfortable and I appreciate that. And it's family run, so I really appreciate that. I'm going to rinse my hair before I go to the salon. I want to see if I can get it to do close to my natural curl because this stylist has only cut my hair once before and I really want her to see what that looks like. So that's the plan for today. Work, salon, and some fresh hair. So excited for that. Hey y'all, so this is my current hair. As you can see, I, um, I rinsed it, I put a little bit of product in there and then I diffused it. What I just do is I wash it with the shampoo that I use and then sometimes the conditioner. I put this in, um, this R & Co uh, like leave-in conditioner. And then I've been using um, this one by R & Co. It's for wavy hair and then I put that in there, kind of comb those in. I finger twist my hair and then I diffuse it and then I did go in with like a tiny little barrel curling iron and just kind of touch up some to give it a little bit more definition. A little less frizz and this is what it does. It's a little heavy I think. I want to have a bit more volume, bring it up a bit and obviously we're going to work on the color. So that's the hair currently. Um, this is another one by R Co that I have. More of like a shine and texture spray. I haven't used this one as much. And then um, this woman that I'm going to, she's a relatively new stylist for me, but she gave me this last time as a hair mask. It's actually got, um, I'll see if I can show you. Uh, she included some of the dye color that my um, previous hair color was so that I could kind of try and maintain my color while I use this. But this is basically a hair protein mask. And I use this in the shower like once or twice a month and I've just noticed that it really does make a difference for the quality of my curl after I use that so I think that's a cool product hopefully we can get a new pot of that for whatever hair color I end up with today um or maybe this will still work I don't know yet but yeah I really really like this girl so I am it's called evolve hair and art in Seattle it's like in the Ravenna Green Lake area so um let's get going over there and get new hair Hopefully you can hear this a little bit, but we're just painting in the hair color and then a cut and we will see what we end up with. Okay, so I am getting my hair colored right now and apparently this is the process for organic hair color, which I think is hilarious. It's a very cool hat. Do you like it? <laughs> but this area is super cute. There's a little back garden at this salon that you get to sit at while you're doing your color done. Anyway, check in soon. Okay, welcome back from the salon. And this is the hair. I'll show it to you in natural light in a minute. But um, essentially what we decided was that my hair needed to be reshaped. Um, the long layers were not giving me the curl volume that I wanted. So obviously this is not my natural curl. This is a blowout, but she put in a ton of layering. So I feel a little bit like I have the Rachel haircut at the moment or some version of it. Um, yeah, but we did the color. Um, it's not exactly the picture I wanted, but 
um, when we were talking about it, obviously the picture that I had as inspiration required some balayage and some lightening and I have done that on my hair before and I'm not opposed to it, but it does tend to dry out my hair quite a bit and I just didn't want to do that. Um, also, anyway, it's the first time we've done color together. So this is what we decided on. We did painting in some of the darker colors and then using the hair I already had to, as kind of the highlights because it was lighter and then painting in some purple as well. So um, yeah, I like it a lot. I prefer to be dark as opposed to like um, the lighter brunette and blondes that a lot of people like and I prefer warm tones to the ashy cool tones. So I'm very happy with it. I like the high contrast with my complexion. I am very curious to see what happens in a couple of days when I wash it and then style it with my natural curl. I'm really interested to see how that reacts, how this cut reacts to that. So um, something to look forward to in a couple of days. I will definitely share that with you. And then I did pick up a new shampoo. Um, this is the Protein Builder shampoo. Uh, because, oh, sorry, I'm not holding it high enough. <laughs> this is similar to the hair mask I was mentioning earlier, this thing. Uh, yeah. So, um, I wasn't really sure what my hair needed, but I thought like, hey, let's just work on strengthening it. I feel like I lose a lot of hair, less so nowadays, but um, I just wanna continue to build those curl bonds and really strengthen my hair. So that's what we're doing right now. The process is an organic hair color. Um, so there's no ammonia or anything like that. So I need to be very cautious of any kind of sulfates or really harsh chemicals. So needing to be kind of careful about the products I use, but I talked to her about what I currently have and they're all good. So yeah, so this is it. I am really happy with it. Let me see if I can show you a little bit more from the back. I haven't really had a chance to look at the back yet either. Um, so yeah, that's my new hair. I really, really like it so far, obviously. I mean, it just was done, so. Um, anyway, I stopped at Trader Joe's on the way home and I need to put that away. I found my favorite plantain chips. So let's go do that and get some dinner ready. And then obviously I need to do a few hours of work this evening because I was at the salon most of the day. So time to make up for lost work hours. Okay, I really quickly wanted to show you the hair in the natural light. You can see the color a little bit better. Let me know what you think of it in the comments. grocery store it would be Trader Joe's not everything there is excellent but like in general it's pretty good and it's extremely affordable but there are a few things there that I just like obsess about so one of them is their smoked gouda um this is by far my favorite gouda cheese and it's the most affordably priced one uh the QFC has a smoked gouda that's decent but this is like I love this thing. I go nuts for it. Then there's this Genoa, yeah, I think that's how you pronounce it, Genoa pesto. Um, this pesto is by far my favorite pesto of any pesto I have ever had. I don't know why, I just love it. It's so, so good. I'm like, yeah, this is amazing. And then the cracked plantain chips. I think Anybody who knows about these chips knows that they are just like absurdly delicious and I haven't been able to find them at the Trader Joe's closest to me for a long time. My friend did bring some to me from her Trader Joe's like way over on the other side of um, the metro area. So I finally found them at the Trader Joe's this time around. So I bought three bags of these and they will probably be gone in the next two days. They're so good, uh, a little too good, yeah. I like could have bought way more, but I stopped myself thinking somebody else will want these and I shouldn't hoard them also better for me in the long run. So anyway, that's like a mini little Trader Joe's haul for you. But these are probably my three favorite products from Trader Joe's. Um, and I'm 
going to open this bag now while I'm waiting for my quiche to, to cook. So. Alright y'all, it's been a day. Um, work today was just really frustrating and we were trying to solve a fire drill. Um, and it just took a lot longer than it was supposed to and then it was just very mundane and it was just really frustrating plus there were like six other priorities that i needed to get to today and was not able to but that's how life goes sometimes and it is okay so i am calling it a day at about uh, about 7 45 is when i called it it's about eight o'clock 805 now and I'm going to go for a run because it is a good source of stress relief and because I am super far behind on my training for the half marathon that I am still planning to run in September. Honestly, I need like another month or more to prepare. I've been really inconsistent with my training. Last week did not help the situation. Um, I just went wasn't able to get in um, as many workouts as I would have liked. And I just was really tired and not really feeling motivated. So my training is definitely not where it should be. I'm hoping I can kind of make up for some lost time and count on my general level of fitness to get me through, but I think it's gonna be a rough race. <laughs> That's okay. Um, it doesn't have to be like a personal best time or anything, that's not the point. So yeah, so I'm gonna go run and I hope that it puts me in a better mood and yeah. I am back from my run and just making some dinner really quickly. I don't know what it is, but I really enjoy colored pasta. I don't think it makes any difference in terms of flavor, but I really enjoy it. <laughs> and then I have some green beans back here cooking up and I'll just stir that together with some pesto and feta. Um, I wish I had more tomatoes from my garden. Um, these ones are just kind of finishing up ripening. And then this is the first Roma tomato I've gathered. It is pretty ripe, but I think I'm just going to let it sit there for another day or two before I use it. So that's great. Um, it's nice to be able to get a couple of tomatoes from your garden, but maybe not enough to add to tonight's dinner quite yet. Um, I'm just gonna have my dinner and listen to the book on tape. I started listening to, well, so let me back up. I'm not typically an audiobook fan. I really do prefer to read like a physical book. However, given that I live on a computer 24 seven for work um, and that I just find increasingly that reading smaller print textbooks to be very hard on my eyes. I think it's a combination of just so much screen time that by the end of the day trying to focus on smaller print is just too much. Um, I can't really do it anymore. So um, I just haven't been reading for a long long time and I recently when my nephews were visiting I got a library card again and access to the public library. So I started doing the audiobook thing and I've been kind of shunning it because I, I do really find that it's, I get distracted or I fall asleep or I just lose my place in audiobooks. Um, but we're gonna give it a try. So I downloaded The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's one that's been on the list of things that I think everybody has on their list of things to read. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody is about reading this book at some point in their life and it's been on my list for a long time. So. That is what I am listening to these days. I also have deep work checked out, so I need to do that, and then another kind of like marketing focus book. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. It's a nice, alter I don't watch a ton of TV in the evenings, um, so it's nice to have audiobooks to listen to because I just find that I really need a break from the screen. So um, I'm gonna finish getting this food together, hop in the shower, and then enjoy some time listening to my book and eating my dinner. Happy hump day everybody! It is Wednesday and I am done with work for the day and let me tell you it was a lot of adjusting pixels and building emails and it was just 
tedious, but it's over and the sun is shining and I am gonna walk around the neighborhood with my beer in hand. It's technically illegal, but we do it anyway. And just enjoy the sunshine. So um, outfit of the day, I don't know if you can see it very well. I really suck at this. Um, This is my outfit of the day. This anthropology shirt, uh, tank tops that I have had, I think for at least eight years. And then Mayweather shorts I got from last year, they're super high-waisted, which I typically like, but they're doing a thing right now, which is fine. And Target flippy floppies that I've had for years. And then this jewelry, which I love, it's like my favorite stacking necklace set. And these earrings. Um, I think these are all from Nordstrom Rack, and I have no idea who the designer was, and I bought them eternities ago, so no idea, but some of my favorite jewelry pieces to wear. Um, I definitely love gold over silver, but I wear them both happily. Anyway, let's get some beers and let's get into the sunshine. Friday. Uh, I believe the last thing we were doing together was going on a walk around the canal through the Fremont neighborhood, Queen Anne, and back into Ballard. So that's a nice loop um, that I like to do occasionally, just like when I have an evening and I can take a long walk. So that was very nice. Um, other than that, I've just been working out quite a bit this week. I did a weightlifting session yesterday at the gym and then did a five mile run, and it was a surprising, like, the run was surprisingly good time. I think I did like a nine minute, 30 mile. So um, yeah, I did it weights first because I wanted to tire my legs out because I'm trying to build some endurance. Um, try and make up for some of those lost runs I haven't been getting in. Uh, we'll see if that makes much of a difference. But anyway, um, today is the first hair wash since I cut my hair on Monday and colored it. So um, honestly, if I wasn't going out on a date tonight, I probably would let it go another day or two, but, um, tonight we have a date. It's the first date, um, at the guy in Hinge. Honestly, my, my approach to dating right now is just, like, go out with people as long as they don't seem like a total creep and, um, just see how it goes. I've found that the texting via the apps just really doesn't give you a very good sense, so... My approach is really just go out with a lot of people, um, say yes most of the time, honestly. And I wasn't doing anything else tonight, so we're gonna go have a cocktail. Um, but you get to help me pick out a date night outfit. Um, it's probably more effort than, than a date like this really deserves, but I am dressing up for me because I enjoy it. So I'm gonna get pretty, do my hair, do my makeup, put on a cute outfit. We're going to meet at this cocktail bar downtown. Um, it's a place I've only been once before. It's kind of more of like a loungy feel, so I feel like I can wear something a little bit more dressy instead of just your average, like, let's meet for a beer kind of date. So that's nice too. Um, yeah, let's get in the shower and wash this hair. Okay, so this is my hair. It is a little bit of product in it, twisted around my fingers, and then I just diffused it. I will go in with the curling iron and um, do a little bit of touch-ups and defining, but um, yeah, we'll just kind of see how it works for the next day or two, and then if I find that there are just sort of odd curls that are coming out, I can go in and she'll touch those up for me, so that's nice. Um, but onto the outfit. So this, well, so I'll just take this jacket off first and start from the basic outfit. So this is just um, my black Zara crop top that I've been loving and this Topshop skirt that I picked up a couple of weeks ago. I think it's super cute, very like basic, but the pattern on the skirt makes it a little bit more interesting. It has a bit of a 90s clueless vibe to it, which I love. Um, 
and it's just really basic and cute. And I think you can take that and you can go a couple of directions with it. So as I was earlier wearing this jean jacket, this is probably a little too casual for where we're going. But I think that if I was going to a concert and I just wanted to change out um, the heels that I'm currently wearing for a flat shoe, either like a sneaker or a basic flat or something, just a little bit more appropriate for dancing and crowds, then this could be a really cute um, like date concert outfit. But that's not where we're going. We're going to a cocktail bar lounge. So I think what I would wear is my jean jacket, or not my jean jacket, <laughs> my motorcycle jacket. And I know it's still kind of a bit of a punk rock vibe, but in a bit more of a sophisticated way. The jacket is a nice jacket, it's got this tailoring, and I think it just gives it a little bit of edge, but still keeps it nice and classy. And then obviously if I'm warm in the bar or when I get there, I can just take off the jacket and it's still a very classic outfit, very sophisticated and like simple. So this is one option that I really like. I would probably wear silver, well this is rose gold on here. I don't really care about mixing my metals unless they really, really clash. So I'd probably wear silver because that's what I'm feeling today, the silver jewelry. Yeah, so this is outfit number one. Just to give you a bit more of like, um, don't look at my toes too closely, but here you go. This is the $12 crop top from Zara, which might be the best purchase I've made in a long time. I think this skirt was like 20 or 30 bucks from Topshop at uh, Nordstrom Rack. Super cute. And I'm back in this outfit. If you watched, I think it was my last vlog over the 4th of July weekend, um, I tried this outfit on for going out to a dance party for Lizzo and it just wasn't the right vibe. I mean, it was a dance party themed around Lizzo music. Lizzo was not actually there. That would have been amazing. Anyway, this outfit, I really love this outfit. I keep reaching for it, which tells me I need to wear it soon. It just feels a little, um, well, for a first date, wearing lingerie seems a little like, mm. However, I don't think it's too much, and obviously the full skirt is very cute. I think that if I was feeling really self-conscious about it, I could wear, again, that leather jacket. I think that would give it a little bit more edge anyway, which I like. I like the juxtaposition. Um, but I also think it would cover me a little bit more, and so then if I was feeling self-conscious, I could just use that to cover up a bit. So I think that's possible. Let me, where did I put that? Let me be right back. Here it is. So this is it with the leather jacket. And it's quite covering and then you just see kind of a peak of it. And if I wanna take it off, I can. And it's like, hey. Uh, and if not, it's on and I feel very covered and comfortable. So I think that's a good option. I don't know that it does a lot for my shape unless I zip it up like this. It is like, in the 70s right now though, so I don't know how much I really want to wear a leather jacket, although I think the restaurant slash bar will be quite air conditioned. I don't know. Um, trying to think if there's another option I have to like put something over this. Um, I don't necessarily think I need to, it's just quite, again, it's very dressy. It might feel a little over the top for a first date. Um, which is why I think the jacket helps tone it down. I could put it with the jean jacket as well, but that's like a very different vibe. I'll show you that too. These are like my go-to jackets. Um, these are like the only two jackets I wear anymore. So this is again, like, it's casual. This feels almost like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this look. It's cute, I think. I'm just not sure where you would wear this to. Where would you wear this outfit to? <laughs> I really want to wear it. I just need to find the appropriate place to do this. So, okay, so this is outfit number two. The bodysuit lingerie top with the tulle skirt. Again. In a bit more detail. It's very pretty. I'm 
feeling this one. I know that I've just been wearing like a lot of black. <laughs> um, it's just what a lot of my party clothes are in, and I don't know, it's classic and always appropriate. So, except maybe at a wedding. But even then, people wear little black dresses to weddings. So, when is black not appropriate? I don't know. Um, this Nanushka skirt. I love it. I bought it last year. I've literally never had an opportunity to wear it or it's never been the appropriate item of clothing for the occasion. And this feels like the occasion it is appropriate for. I love that it sort of cinches me in here. It does like a little bit of ruching, which is great. Um, this is just like a blouse, like a sheer like uh, shell blouse that I've had for literally years. No idea where it's from. It's probably I don't know, six years old at least, so I've had it a long time, and then this is literally just a black bra that I'm wearing. So it just feels very um, sexy without being overly revealing, without being over the top, very like on trend, um, very cool girl. I don't actually need to take my um, bomber or my motorcycle jacket. It is quite warm outside, so I mean, I can take my jacket with me. It would clash a little bit with the leather here. This might be the occasion to pull in the red blazer. The thing is, this is a little, it's kind of a longer blazer and I feel like the proportions are off and it makes it feel a little too like business woman. Like this doesn't feel right. It's not the right blazer. Um, at least I don't think it is. This feels more like corporate America than date night. So probably a no. Um, I don't know what jacket would be correct with this. I'd be curious to know what you would wear with this for like a jacket. Um, yeah, I think this to me is like probably my favorite so far. It feels the most appropriate and like, like the vibe I'm going for. So yeah, I really like it. This is up in number three. Good morning. Um, let me turn off this music. I don't think it'll matter, but you never know. Anyway, good morning. Um, it is now Saturday around 10.30, I think. And yeah, I just wanted to fill you in on yesterday's date since we picked out an outfit together. Um, yeah, the guy was nice enough, like, he was nice, but he wasn't particularly interesting. And so it was kind of a, I was pretty bored initially, and then as we talked more and he had a few drinks, he loosened up a little bit and he became a little bit more interesting. He was super, super nice guy, like, you know, totally fine, very respectful, very sweet, but um, not at all interesting to me on that in that way. So, I don't know, we just had a couple of drinks and then we went for a long walk along the waterfront. I was in heels and by the end of it, <laughs> my feet were bleeding a little bit, so um, probably should have rethought that, but totally fine. Um, yeah, no second date, but that's okay. It was nice to just get out and get dressed and hang out with somebody new. Um, but yeah, I thought, you know, sorry, I'm on my balcony and I like realize that the neighbors can probably hear me, but anyway. Um, yeah, I would say that dating in your 30s is just such an interesting situation. When I was dating in my 20s, I would go out with like, I don't know, I had like three or four men I'd be dating at a time. I'd go out with people like, just like constantly going on dates and it was fun and it was always very casual and I was always very straightforward with people about what I was looking for, which was to have fun. I was just, you know, if I met somebody, great, but mostly I was just out there to meet people and have a good time and enjoy myself. So that was my 20s and I think that that was the right thing for me and I really enjoyed them. Um, had some great stories, some disasters, but some great stories. And uh, yeah, now, I don't know, ever since um, probably around like 28, 29, um, but specifically probably, like I started feeling this way around 28, 29, but really around 31, I really like 
had a mindset change and was really realizing that I wanted something a little bit more substantial. I felt ready to be um, in a more committed relationship and I didn't date for like two years, intentionally stopped dating and then I got into a relationship with somebody and that lasted about 18 months and then we broke up in May of 2020 and that was really hard and it continues to be difficult for me because I am very picky about who I make long-term commitments to. So here I am again in 2021. I started going out on some dates in 2020, like at the end of the year, and just each time I went out, I was like, eh, I'm not ready, I don't feel like this is right. It's for maybe like two and a half months now, pretty consistently, and had some good dates, mostly not interesting people. Like, they're interesting people, but they're just not people I would be interested in continuing to date. And I'm also having a hard time figuring out what do I want because I don't know that I'm ready to get into a committed relationship again. I feel very hesitant about that. And part of me wants to kind of go back to the like 20 something dating where I'm just kind of out there having a good time. Um, but I also know that that's really not very satisfying to me in the long run and not really what I want. Um, so I'm just kind of trying to figure it out. I think my answer is to just go on a lot of dates, be very particular about who I continue to spend my time and energy on. And so I think it's just like, in my 20s I'd be like, yeah, I'm not super into him, he's not like, or maybe he's kind of a jerk, definitely dated a lot of jerks in my 20s. <laughs> I mean, not that they're jerks. I think, I think a lot of us in our 20s are just very self-absorbed, we don't know how to communicate, we don't know how to be fair to other people. And that's something I think I've learned a lot of through the years and always tried to be very straightforward and honest with people and I have failed as well at that and continue to fail but I'm trying really hard to be very straightforward so like when the guy last night wanted my number it would have been easy to give it to him and then kind of ghost him but I just was like no I thank you for the date but I'm not gonna like, see you again and that's really hard to do especially face to face it feels really uncomfortable and I think it's easier for a lot of us to just let it go away on its own or like just kind of fade away but we hurt other people when we do that and I don't want to be a part of that so I think dating in my 30s is a lot more intentional in that I'm looking for something particular but also my experience has always been that online dating is a very like online communication is a very bad measure of chemistry in person for me personally and so I prefer to just like I did last night didn't know much about the guy, exchanged a few messages, like, sure, let's go have a drink. Worst case scenario, you know, it's a mediocre date. I mean, worst case scenario is worst case scenario, but most often it's just, thanks for a couple hours of conversation, you know, nice time, it's like, good luck to you, so. And occasionally, you find something more interesting, and those are great, and then you get to go through that slightly terrifying process, so. So that's dating in my 30s. Um, I'd be curious to know how I, like anybody else is doing on the dating scene. Like, I feel like the pandemic has kind of pushed people in two directions, and maybe I've talked about this a little bit, but like, some people have realized, oh, I really want a partner. Like That was really lonely, and I want a partner. And so that they're very much on the like hunt for the partner. And then the other half is like, I've been locked up forever and I just want to go and fuck anything. <laughs> and yeah, and so there's like these two extremes. And I'm trying to be much closer. Obviously I'm much closer to the like I want a partner situation. Um, but I don't necessarily want to jump into it just because I don't get a partner just to have a partner. It's much better to be alone and happy than to be with the wrong person. So anyway, let me know what you... Um, have been doing for dating these days or how that's going for you i'm super curious what is your online dating strategy um, i think i'm gonna like wrap this vlog up here with this lovely conversation and um i need to edit this and get it out so hopefully you'll be seeing this on monday that's the intention we'll see if that happens